Hello everyone, welcome back to my organic chemistry mini lecture. Today our topic will be radical reaction. Um, we will use the example of a reaction of alkane and alkenes. And usually alkane are just used as fuels. And uh, because the pKa of the proton in the alkane is more than 60 usually, so it's not very reactive under normal conditions. But under some special condition like a radical reaction, alkanes actually can be converted to other product. I use the example of the methane react with the chlorine, and this H nu is the, actually the energy of the photon, but we use the symbol represent the condition is light. Although you can also use high temperature for this radical reaction, but in this lecture, I will just use the light as the condition. Now the product is chloromethane, and the byproduct is hydrogen chloride. So this is the chlorination of the alkane. The mechanism of radical reaction is different with the other organic reactions. So um, the radical reaction always includes three big steps. First initiation, second propagation, third termination. Let's look at the initiation first. Initiation means it will produce the first radical, several radical that can initiate the main reaction propagation. So initiation of this reaction is the decomposition of the chlorine molecule under light this single bond between two chlorine atom can uh, do a homolytic cleavage. I'll show you the arrow here. So normally in other organic reactions, the electrons of the single bond or pi bond or lone pair will go together. So the arrow always shows the movement of two electrons together. However, in the radical reaction, the bond will split equally. So like this, I draw the two arrow. So the two electrons in this single bond will split to two atoms of this two chlorine here in this example. So since each arrow shows just one electron, so we have to use half arrow. So it's like fish hook with just one bob. Okay, another electron goes to the other chlorine. So this first step will produce two chlorine radical. We call this radical. And then propagation step is the main steps. First, the chlorine radical generate in the initiation step will react with methane. I just highlight this hydrogen because I'm going to break this single bond between the carbon and this hydrogen. So that will split this two electrons to form two radicals. One is a hydrogen radical, one is a methyl radical. The hydrogen radical can react with the chlorine radical form hydrogen chloride. So the arrow shown here. Again, you see this half arrow, so like fish hook. And then from this hydrogen chloride as the byproduct, and this is the methyl radical. This methyl radical will go to second step, react with the chlorine molecule. And in this step, the chlorine-chlorine single bond will homolytic cleaved to form two chlorine radical. One of the chlorine radical combined with the methyl radical to form the major product, the chloromethane. The other chlorine radical will stay as a product. And then after you form this chlorine radical, this will go back to the first step, react with more methane. And so this is a cycle, sustainable. They will keep going, keep going until the limiting reactant are consumed. After that step, or go to termination. Termination step is when all the limiting reactants consumed, the leftover radicals will just uh, quench with each other, which with each other. So for example, two chlorine radical can react with each other to form the uh, 
chlorine molecule. See, I said quench because the product is not radical. If you look at the initiation, the propagation, uh, they usually will generate one radical, but in a termination, it's radical react with each other and then form a neutral product. Another possible termination reaction is the uh, two methyl radical. See, that's methyl radical could combine with each other to form the another byproduct, methane. And they, they can also cross react chlorine with the methyl radical. They can also form the quench product. And this will provide a little bit more product. Majority product generate in the propagation steps. That is the mechanism of the radical reaction, very typical radical reaction. Always include the three steps, initiation, propagation, and termination. And this reaction, if you have more chlorine, if you have excess chlorine, actually this chloromethane can keep react with the excess chlorine to make dichloromethane, it's also called a methylene chloride, and if you still have more chlorine, can make chloroform, like a CHCO3. And if you have enough chlorine, eventually the product will be the carbon tetrachloride. That's all through the radical reaction. Okay, talk about the reaction of the alkene with the hydrogen bromide. Uh, normally, this reaction, so-called hydro, uh, hydrobromic uh, bromination of alkene, will give you Markovnikov product. That means the vanillic carbon with more hydrogen will take the hydrogen and then the other vanillic carbon will take bromine. So the product should be 2-bromopropane. However, if this is a radical reaction, for example, light with some peroxide, the product will be anti-Markovnikov product. It will be 1-bromopropane. So let's look at the mechanism. Initiation step is the peroxide split the single bond between two oxygen. That's called a homolytic cleavage. Under the light, it can form two alkoxy radical. This alkoxy radical can react with the hydrogen bromide. And this single bond between hydrogen bromine will split to two radical. One radical on hydrogen will combine with this uh, alkoxy radical to form alcohol. And the other radical will be bromine radical. That's the alcohol, that's a bromine radical. Now go to the propagation step. You notice that there are two steps in the initiation. So we need this bromine radical for propagation. The bromine radical can react with the alkene. So this time it's a pi bond will split. So homolytic cleavage of the pi bond form two radical, one on this carbon, one on this carbon. And this carbon will combine with the bromine radical to form a new carbon-bromine bond here. The other carbon will keep this radical. Of course, there's another possible reaction. This carbon take the bromine, the other carbon keep the radical. That's the other possible product. However, the secondary, this is a secondary radical. It's more stable than this primary radical. So this pathway actually will not happen. And then this radical will go to the second step of propagation. That reacts with hydrogen bromide. And this time and will uh, cleave this hydrogen bromine single bond. And hydrogen radical combined with this radical to form the product and also generate the bromine radical. So that's the major product. And this is the bromine radical. This go back to the first step of the propagation to react with more alkene. Keep going, keep going until the limiting reactant consumed. Termination step is the quench of those radicals. For example, these two radical, the secondary radical uh, can react with each other to form this dibromide. And this secondary radical can react with the bromine, can form another dibromide. It's so one two dibromide. This is one four dibromide. And two bromine radical can also combine to form the bromine molecule. So that is the 
example of the reaction of alkene with the hydrogen bromide. Now, we'll talk about the bromination of allylic carbon using MBS. So that is the alkene, and this is MBS, the structure, and this is the n bromo succinamide. And this is the radical reaction. You see the light as the peroxide, and the product is allylic bromide, and byproduct is a succinamide. The mechanism first start, uh, start at the initiation. The initiation first reaction is the homolytic cleave cleavage of this peroxide, and the light this can cleave the two alkoxy radical. We saw this just now. And then this radical can react with this MBS. And this single bond between nitrogen and bromine will split to two radical. The radical on the nitrogen combined with this alkoxy radical. And the other radical will be the bromine radical. So this is the neutral product. This is the bromine radical for the propagation. So in the propagation, this bromine radical will react with the alkene. So basically, break this carbon-hydrogen bond on the analytic position, homolytic, homolytic cleavage of this single bond give you two radicals. One is radical on this carbon. The other radical is hydrogen radical. Hydrogen radical will combine with the bromine radical to form the byproduct hydrogen bromide. And uh, I'm sorry, it's the intermediate, not byproduct. And then this is the allylic radical. Now this intermediate hydrogen bromide will react with MBS to form succinamide and a bromine molecule, Br2. Okay, Bromine molecule will go to the third step, react with the allylic radical in, from the first step, and homolytic cleavage of this bromine-bromine single bond will generate two bromine radicals. One of the bromine radical will react with this allylic radical, form this major product, allylic bromide. And the other bromine radical will go back to the first step, react with, with more alkene. So that is sustainable a cycle and will run again, 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 until the limiting reactant consumed. Termination, you can draw Two bromine radicals will quench with each other to form the bromine molecule. Or the two allylic radicals combine and quench to form the neutral, it's isolated diene. And the allylic radical can also uh, react with the bromine radical to form the allylic bromide, just a little bit more product. And this is the very complicated one. Now, last, we will talk about the ether's safety issue. Um, we know the ether, if saved for too long time, this will be dangerous because it will be converted to peroxide by oxygen in the air. So uh, this peroxide is very explosive and so that's a safety issue. That's why in organic synthesis, uh, if you need to use ether, you should use the fresh made ether. Okay, so let's look at the structure of oxygen molecule first. This is the lowest structure of oxygen molecule. And there's double bond between the two oxygen and each oxygen has two long pairs. You can also draw another way. So you can split this pi bond to two radicals. So each oxygen will have one radical. So this is kind of like a di radical. And you can simplify that, just draw the radical, not the lone pair. So I will use this, just easier way to draw. Initiation of this reaction will be the alpha proton, the alpha carbon, the single bond will be cleaved. And uh, the hydrogen, radical will react with this di radical of the oxygen molecule to form the peroxide, hydrogen peroxide radical. And this radical will stay on this alpha carbon. So this is the alpha carbon radical here on the ether. Now, propagation step will involve this radical. 
this radical will react with another molecule of oxygen. So this is a one radical, this is a di radical. So these two radical can combine to form a peroxide radical. And this peroxide radical will react with another molecule of the ether. So we'll split this single bonds two electrons and one of the hydrogen radical will combine with this peroxide radical and the other radical will stay here as the alpha uh, carbons radical so you will form this pipe product the peroxide and the radical this alpha radical will go back to the first step of propagation and then keep going Termination involved two radical quench. So for example, these two alpha radical can combine and can form this diethoxybutane. And these two radical, different radical can also combine to form another type of peroxide. Okay, these peroxide, these peroxide are very explosive. That's why this is a safety issue. Okay, that's all I want to talk about the radical reaction. So uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Good luck.